That was President Joe Biden thanking Dwayne Arrington, the general manager at D.C. Central Kitchen, which prepares more than 5,000 meals a day for people in need. Thanksgiving is a huge day for D.C. Central Kitchen. And today, the president and first lady, along with the vice president and her husband, helped prepare Thanksgiving meals at the community kitchen. For the previous four years, Thanksgiving was not a time for presidential thanks and goodwill. It was a time, like every other day of the year, for presidential anger and pathological lies. As we gather together for Thanksgiving, you know, some people want to change the name Thanksgiving. They don't want to use the term Thanksgiving. People have different ideas why it shouldn't be called Thanksgiving, but everybody in this room I know loves the name Thanksgiving, and we're not changing it. Today in The Atlantic, Molly Jogfast writes, less than a year ago, America was led by a man who governed to please the Fox News host, Tucker Carlson, and toyed with the idea of imposing martial law. After Donald Trump, you'd think the American people would just enjoy having a normal president who doesn't use his Twitter account to threaten neighboring countries or corporations, but they don't. Take one look at national polling numbers, and you'll see that Americans are unhappy with Joe Biden. According to 538, 51.7% of Americans disapprove of his job performance. A recent Quinnipiac University poll showed that 50% disapprove of Biden's handling of the pandemic and 59% disapprove of his handling of the economy. The remedy for the president's slumping poll numbers is proposed in the title of Molly Jong Fast's article, which is Biden Needs an Enemy. And joining us now are Molly Jong Fast, contributing writer at The Atlantic and author of the newsletter cleverly called Wait, What? And Jonathan Alter, columnist for The Daily Beast and an MSNBC political analyst. Molly, first of all, uh, how was my reading of the title of your uh, newsletter? I, that, that's, it's kind of <laughs> tricky for an anchor man, you know. I think you got it just right. Okay, Thank I, you. I thought that was the rhythm of it. Okay. Uh, so, your, make your case uh, that Biden needs an enemy and what kind of enemy? It could be anyone. I mean, it could be childhood poverty, right? They have this tax credit, this childhood tax credit that's very popular and that has taken all of these children out of poverty. It could be FDR used rich people. I mean, it could be anything. I think it's important that it's a narrative that gets out there and that he uses again and again. I mean, you don't want an you don't want an enemy like with Wag the Dog. You don't want people to get hurt. You don't want a war. You want to take down the temperature. But I mean, disinformation, misinformation. There's a lot of problems out there. Uh, you cite a couple of enemies uh, that that different presidents used, and the. You know, I guess maybe the most brilliant being Ronald Reagan's. And you say, Ronald Reagan pitted his supporters against the government itself, announcing in the first line of his first inaugural address, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. This was ingenious because it allowed Reagan to avoid taking responsibility for just about everything. If his administration messed up, he could just nod along and as if to say, I told you so. Uh, and Jonathan Alter, uh, that that is possibly the the politically most effective enemy a president could have picked. Yeah, that worked very well uh, for Reagan. Uh, I agree that you need a president to be seen as fighting for something and mm -hmm. often fighting against something. And Democrats in particular want their president to be a fighter. That doesn't mean he has to be mm -hmm. Trump. But he he doesn't have to be irritating. Uh, he doesn't have to be engaged in fisticuffs all the time. He can be a healer and a fighter, depending on the mm -hmm. venue. But what he's not doing is he's not being the leader of the Democratic Party. And they're not doing any brand damage uh, to the Republican Party, even though there are many opportunities. You know, the conservatives right. meet in Hungary and buy it just like a big fat one over the plate for for Biden, he doesn't swing at it. He doesn't really swing yeah. at anything, and he needs to uh, because uh, his party, which is where most of the erosion is, he didn't have any Republican support, so the erosion has been among Democrats and independents 
And many of them want to see him get out there and do what politicians are supposed to do, mix it up. Now, FDR didn't just have one enemy, the, the rich. That was mostly in just a, a couple of speeches. He always had different, different uh, targets. So sometimes he'd use ridicule. You know, there were these members of Congress. He called them Martin, Barton, and Fish. And it was funny and denigrating. You know, where is the, uh, you know, mean Marjorie Green, leader right. of the Republicans? You know, stigmatizing the opposition is very much part of politics.